Hello everybody, in this video we are going to talk about how we can integrate Genie with Teams. So for those that haven't ever used the Genie product, Genie is our text to SQL product in Databricks. So you really attach a couple of tables into a Genie space, you attach it, attach it to some compute, and then you can interact with your data using natural language. So Harry, let's talk a little bit about what is the Genie API in this case, and then how we can integrate it with Micro. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I think, as you know, Genie is an excellent tool for, for people who are not so tech savvy. If they want to get insights from the data, they can just use their national language and it works flawlessly. One of the challenge which people may always use is that in order for someone to use Genie, you have to be on the Databricks platform to be able to use it. But can we do it better? What about business users who often don't use something like a Databricks workspace, right? But they have access to things like Slack or they have access to things like Teams. So instead of bringing the users into the Genie and Databricks platform, why don't we bring Genie into them close to their communication platform they use. So that was the idea behind why we introduced the API feature of Genie, which is now I think it's in public preview already. Mm -hmm. So with that, you can what the interface you do by going to the platform and asking questions, it is available as an API endpoint. Now because it's available as an API endpoint, it gives you the option where you can integrate this with any of the platform. So in this example, we will talk about how it could work where you can integrate a Genie to your Microsoft Teams and then add it as an app in your teams and ask questions as if you are talking to a genie app. So that's that's the background behind it. Amazing. So how does this solution work? Can you give us like... Do you yes. Have so yeah, stuff? let me share my screen. Right. So this is a very small architecture representation how it would work. So basically you need the database platform, of course, with a genie space, with the data available in your Unity catalog and the genie needs to attach to a SQL warehouse so for it to submit the query. So that's all the database platform. In addition to that, we need certain resources to be created on the Azure side to may be able to integrate with Teams. The first one is we need to host something called as a web app in Azure. So basically you write a Python which is we host as a web app. The Python project idea is to receive the request from Teams users as an API endpoint and then send it to Genie and get the data, process it in a JSON format and send it back. So Microsoft has this, the bot builder framework created. So you implement that framework and it gives you options where if you are trying to make a Genie Teams integration. So Teams has different events which it emits every time a user interacts with it, like on message activity, on team user join activity. So you can basically implement any of those function and overwrite your logic in such a way. In that, the simple one is on message uh, interface. Basically, every time a user types something, it invokes the on message. So you can write a logic where you can interpret that message and get that question and send it to Genie and get the response and send it back. Basically, you can act as the intermediary in between. So the bulk of the logic is the app which you create. It can be in any language. I have chosen to write in Python. And then you host that in your web app, which is an Azure web app. And then you create something called as an Azure bot, which is a Azure resource called as Azure bot services. And the, it needs basically two input. One is the endpoint to which it needs to communicate, which is the Genie web app. The web app has a, a endpoint added. Mm -hmm. So I configure that into the bot. And next thing is uh, authenticating, right? So we want the user to be able to authenticate to the database and then use their identity to make requests to Genie so that it respects the user's identity and validates his credentials, which you define and the access permissions you find in Unity catalog. Very and, and nice. So this that. means that whatever answers we get from Genie mm. actually respect. Yes, yes. So this message. obviously means the user needs to be added to the platform. Doesn't have to log into it, but it needs to be added. And then you can whatever permission define on the catalog or the Genie, or you have things like PII information with role level security, that should be respected if you're passing the identity. So it's like not exposing anything that the user Exactly, be exactly. Able so to... in the bot, you configure the OAuth where you configure it to your Microsoft Enter ID, and there are certain permissions which I will cover in a moment, uh, which you need to authenticate. So the first time when the user logs in, he needs to log into it, authenticate himself, and then subsequently it will work. So that's the architecture at a high level. 
if I have to show a little bit more into the resources which I have. So if I go to my resource group, I have my Teams bot Genie app. This is the bot, sorry. This is the web app. So this is the app where I am hosting my code. My code, I will not go into the details of the code, but it's it's a Python project where I have just taken one of the sample team bot framework examples, which Azure has in many different languages, which you can take. And I have added logics to add it. I have taken Luis and Ryan. They are the two guys who have done a very good detailed blogs around Teams Genie integration. I have pretty much used their example, their code base. So thanks to them for all this. The only thing I added is the ability to authenticate the user and pass his identity. So the logic for that is all defined in this function, which basically takes the input and makes the connections to my Genie and create a workspace client. It uses the SDK to make the call and then it passes the message and then takes the data back and sends it back to me. So I probably won't go into the details of what is done in the code, but that's the app. And then I deploy this app into my web app. So it is running under here. And then I create a bot, which is, I call it Teams Genie Bot. The only two things I need to do, one is the configuration where I pass in the web apps, uh, API the endpoint into this messaging endpoint and then I configure the OAuth part. So this is where it asks the users to authenticate and derives the permissions. Now the OAuth part is a little bit tricky because it you need to set, you need to find which service provider I've used Active Select Directory uh, Entra 2 and then I pass in the details of a service principle which acts as my OAuth uh, um, implementer. So I give the client ID secret and the Databricks scope. Now, what I have done in my application is, uh, if I switch to this, yeah, so this is the service principle which I have, which I have configured in the previous step. So there are quite a few things to do here. One is like, you need to like expose an app here by creating like creating a new application URI, it generates an ID. Then you create a scope because you can create multiple scope and you can control which entity can connect to the scope. And then you want to know which client application can call this scope. So in this case, I have added the IDs of the Teams client, the thick client as well as the web client. So if a Teams client can access this, it can call this. So I've given it pre-authorization for these two. So this is what one settings. And then comes to the permissions. So because the user is authenticating, we need to get a token for Databricks as well as his, some of the details like uh, his ID and profile. So in the API permissions, I've added these claims like the user impersonation, which is the key one for the Databricks. Without that, we cannot get a token which has the claim of a Databricks to call an API. Got and then the standard graph IDs like the email, open ID and profile. So when the user authenticates, a scope is generated using these claims and that is what is used for them. So this is all done in the application which I have created and I have I give that details of this application into this settings. So which is what I have put here. So that does my Azure bot and the authentication part. The final step is adding this bot as an app in my teams. So what you do is if I go to my code, I have a folder called as manifest and I have a file called manifest.json. Now this is where it's a standard template with the teams gives to add an app into your teams as an app so the main thing there are a lot of things you can change here the main thing which you need to do to link this to the azure bot is the id so this id i have linked which is nothing but the id of my azure bot so the in this place as well as down below in the web application info this id they are all the same so their ids they match to the azure bots uh id okay. which is the yeah. To this one so this is how the app links to the bot and using the messaging endpoint the bot links to the web app and the web app has the logic to make a call to the genie and then i add this app i just zip them as genie.zip this files which basically contains the manifest.json and some images and then i go to my teams you have to be an administrator of teams to be able to add an app so you i created a trial account using my developer 365 to do this you go to the apps you go say manage apps 
and upload an app and then you can select the zip file and then you upload it with that it will get added and what you get at the end is a app which looks like like this so at the first when i say i think it's already logged out i have added some logic to make sure the user is logged in if i say hi it says unable to log in you need to type login to sign in so i type it login so this is where it will invoke the uh, authentication setup so it should throw up a message i click on continue uh, so it's asking me to enter my login details i've already done that so it doesn't ask me for a consent but if you are doing it for the first time it will ask for your consent saying that it is using those permissions so and once this i have is logged a user right so each user will have to go through this okay yes yeah so once i have logged in if i type hi this time it should make a connection to the genie and it should give me the genie's uh, standard welcome message hello again how can i assist you? <laughs> so what i have done is behind the scenes in the code i have connected that to a one single genie i've kind of hard coded but then you can extend this if you have multiple genie space you can use features of the app where you can provide different cards called as prompt card in the team spot framework so if the user has access to three genie you can show them three cards they can select which genie they want to talk oh, that's and nice. then you make a connection but in this okay, case i'll okay. just hard coded to one of them once I do this, I can just ask questions like describe the data set and it will make a call to Genie from the data and it should give me the output. Yes. Excellent. And I guess if you go to this Genie space in Databricks, you can see all the requests being logged. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask one question. Say, show me count of product by distribution city. So that's the data set which we have in harmonized retail inventory so i'm showing the count of this by distributed city and it should show me summary of different city and the count of products. it's a very simple query but while it is running i can maybe quickly go to oh yeah it already came so oh, well, it gives you the result so in the code i have retrieved the data from api and format it in a json format and send it back so so this gives you the output now if you go to the genie space where is my genie space uh, top left no yeah there. so this is my genie space if i go here you can see the questions i have asked nice it is coming under my name so if you are logged in it will come under maria's name or Lara's name and so on so it has this tree. so what questions you're asking in the teams they are logged here so you know what the users are asking so the idea is the user anyone who is a business user he doesn't have to have a laptop with teams client you can use your own phones teams app then connect to it and ask questions on the go if you are mobile and get your answers without having to log into your workspace and be extended to not just teams to slack or any other thing i think the the teams bought by default supports uh these channels what you see here like microsoft 365 outlook skype slack telegram so this is if you want to do using the azure bot but because genie api if you are hosting it in aws you can use this aws features to send it to any of the features just one question so does the user though needs like to be able to have access to databricks so that then you can give them the permissions to have access to the underlying tables because normally if they don't have access to the tables they shouldn't be able to see the answers right yes yes so they should have access to the tables now how you control whether a user has access to how many genies or not if you connect to genie which tables he has access that is something you can define in your the app which you're hosting so the app which i was talking about right now i have kind of done as a demo which only connects to one single genie space and if the user doesn't have access it will probably throw a message saying the user is not registered yeah. but you can extend that to say that first check if a user is a database user or not if yes then ask him to authenticate if he authenticates find out which genie space he has access to and then only show them to select from then he selects then he can make a call and so on and rest of it will work if you have defined your unity catalog permissions in the right manner so it, some of this logic needs to go into the app which you're hosting to to act as the controller 
but at the end the user needs to be defined in database and all the security principles of unity catalog needs to be followed in order to ensure that the data security is suspected all the way to teams chat yeah so that the viewers don't get the impression that anybody that has teams can just access any genie space that they want it's all extremely secure and part of Unity Catalogs. Exactly, exactly. So the, the good thing about Unity Catalog is it, it integrates so well with all the rest of the products of Databricks. So you define the access permission once and it is reflected everywhere. Even if you extend it to like using the API to something like a Teams integration, that whole access model is still respected. So so that that is a good assurance for the users. Amazing. Thank you, Harry. Yeah, that's it about the Teams part. Yeah, hope you liked it.